Act Four of Antony and Cleopatra by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Four. Scene One. Before Alexandria, Octavius Caesar's camp. Enter Octavius Caesar, Agrippa, and Mecanus with his army. Octavius Caesar reading a letter. He calls me boy, and chides as he has power to beat me out of Egypt. My messenger he hath whipped with rods, dares me to personal combat, Caesar to Antony. Let the old ruffian know I have many other ways to die. Meantime laugh at his challenge. Caesar must think, when one so great begins to rage, he's hunted even to falling. Give him no breath. But now make boot of his distraction. Never anger made good guard for itself. Let our best heads know that to-morrow the last of many battles we mean to fight. Within our files there are, of those that served Mark Antony but late, enough to fetch him in. See it done, and feast the army. We have store to do it, and they have earned the waste. Poor Antony! Exeunt. Scene 2. Alexandria. Cleopatra's palace. Enter Mark Antony, Cleopatra, Demetrius Enobarbus, Carmion, Iris, Alexis, with others. He will not fight with me, Domitius. No. Why should he not? He thinks, being twenty times of better fortune, he is twenty men to one. Tomorrow, soldier, by sea and land I'll fight, or I will live, or bathe my dying honour in the blood that shall make it live again. Wilt thou fight well? I'll strike, and cry, take all. Well said. Come on, call forth my household servants. Let's to-night be bounteous at our meal. Enter three or four servitors. Give me thy hand. Thou hast been rightly honest. So hast thou, thou and thou and thou. You have served me well, and kings have been your fellows. Aside to Demetrius and Abarbus. What means this? Aside to Cleopatra. Tis one of those odd tricks which sorrow shoots out of the mind. And thou art honest too. I wish I could be made so many men, and all of you clapped up together in an Antony, that I might do you service so good as you have done. The, the gods, gods forbid. forbid. Well, my good fellows, wait on me to-night, scant not my cups, and make as much of me as when mine empire was your fellow too, and suffered my command. Aside to Demetrius and Abarbus. What does he mean? Aside to Cleopatra. To make his followers weep. Tend me to-night. May it be the period of your duty. Haply you shall not see me more, or if a mangled shadow. Perchance to-morrow you'll serve another master. I look on you as one that takes his leave, Mine honest friends, I turn you not away, but, like a master married to your good service, stay till death. Tend me to-night two hours, I ask no more, and the gods yield you fort. What mean you, sir, to give them this discomfort? Look, they weep, and I, an ass, am onion-eyed, for shame transform us not to women. Ho, ho, ho! Now the witch take me, if I meant it thus. Grace grow where those drops fall. My hearty friends, you take me in too dolorous a sense, for I speak to you for your comfort. Did desire you to burn this night with torches. No, my hearts, I hope well of to-morrow, and will lead you where rather I expect victorious life than death and honour. Let's to supper, come and drown consideration. Excellent. Scene three. The same before the palace. Enter two soldiers to their guard. Brother, good night. To-morrow is the day. It will determine one way. Fare you well. Heard you of nothing strange about the streets? Nothing. What news? Be like tis but a rumor. Good night to you. Well, sir, good night. Enter two other soldiers. Soldiers, have careful watch. And you, good night. Good night. They place themselves in every corner of the stage. Here we, 
and if tomorrow our navy thrive i have an absolute hope our landmen will stand up tis a brave arm and full of purpose music of the hort boys as under the stage peace what noise list list hark music of the air under the earth it signs well does it not no peace i say what should this mean tis the god hercules whom anthony loved now leaves him walk let's see if other watchmen do hear what we do they advance to another post how now masters speaking together how now how now, how now? now do you, do you hear, hear this ay is not strange do you hear masters do you hear follow the noise so far as we have quarter let's see how it will give off content tis strange excellent scene four the same a room in the palace enter mark antony and cleopatra carmion and others attending eros mine armour eros sleep a little no my chuck eros come mine armour eros enter eros with armour come good fellow put mine iron on if fortune be not ours to-day it is because we brave her come nay i'll help too what's this for ah let be let be thou art the armourer of my heart false false this this soothe la i'll help thus it must be well well we shall thrive now seest thou my good fellow go put on thy defences briefly sir is not this buckled well really really he that unbuckles this till we do please to daft to our repose shall hear a storm thou fumblest eros and my queen's a squire more tight at this than thou despatch o oh, love that thou could see my wars to-day and use the royal occupation thou should see a workman int enter an armed soldier good morrow to thee welcome thou lookst like him that knows a warlike charge to business that we love we rise betime and go to it with delight a thousand sir early thoughts be have on their riveted trim and at the port expect you shout trumpets flourish enter captains and soldiers the morn is fair good morrow general good, good morrow, morrow general. general tis well blown lads this morning like the spirit of a youth that means to be of note begins betimes so so come give me that this way well said fare thee well dame whate'er becomes of me this is the soldier's kiss rebukable kisses her unworthy shameful check it were to stand on more mechanic compliment i'll leave thee now like a man of steel you that will fight follow me close i'll bring you to it adieu Excellent Mark Antony, Eros, Captains, and Soldiers. Please you, retire to your chamber. Lead me. He goes forth gallantly. That he and Caesar might determine this great war in single fight. Then Antony. Oh, but now. Well on. Excellent. Scene five. Alexandria. Mark Antony's camp. Trumpets sound. Enter Mark Antony and Eros, a soldier meeting them. The gods make this a happy day to Antony. Would thou and those thy scars have once prevailed to make me fight at land? Hadst thou done so, the kings that have revolted and the soldier that has this morning left thee would have still followed thy heels. Who's gone this morning? Who? One ever near thee. Call for Eno Barbus. He shall not hear thee, or from Caesar's camp say, I am none of thine. What sayest thou? Sir. He is with Caesar. Sir, his chests and treasure he has not with him. Is he gone? Most certain. Go, Eros, send his treasure after. Do it. Detain no jot, I charge thee. Write to him. I will subscribe. Gentle adieus and greetings. Say that I wish he never find more cause to change a master. Oh, my fortunes have corrupted honest men. Dispatch. Enobarbus. Excellent. Scene six. Alexandria. Octavius Caesar's camp. Flourish. 
enter octavius caesar agrippa with domitius enobarbus and others go forth agrippa and begin the fight our will is antony be took alive make it so known caesar i shall exit the time of universal peace is near prove this a prosperous day the three nooked world shall bear the olive freely enter a messenger antony is come into the field go charge agrippa plant those that have revolted in the van that antony may seem to spend his fury upon himself exuant all but Demetrius and abarbus alexis did revolt and went to jewry on affairs of antony there did persuade great herod to incline himself to caesar and leave his master antony for this pain caesar hath hanged him canidius and the rest that fell away have entertainment but no honourable trust i have done ill of which i do accuse myself so sorely that i will join no more enter a soldier of caesar's enobarbus antony hath after thee sent all thy treasure with his bounty over plus the messenger came on my guard and at thy tent is now unloading of his mules i give it you mock not enobarbus i tell you true best you safe the bringer out of the host i must attend mine office or would have done it myself your emperor continues still a jove exit i am alone the villain of the earth and feel i am so most o antony thou mine of bounty how wouldst thou have paid my better service when my turpitude thou dost so crown with gold this blows my heart if swift thou break it not a swifter mean shall outstrike thought but thought will do it i feel i fight against thee no i will go seek some ditch wherein to die the foulest best fits my latter part of life exit scene seven field of battle between the camps alarum drums and trumpets enter agrippa and others retire we have engaged ourselves too far caesar himself has work and our oppression exceeds what we expected exuant alarums enter mark antony and scarus wounded o oh, my brave emperor this is fought indeed had we done so at first we had driven them home with clouts about their heads thou bleedest apace i had a wound here that was like a t but now tis made an h they do retire we'll beat em into bench holes i have yet room for six scotches more enter eros they are beaten sir and our advantage serves for a fair victory let us score their backs and snatch em up as we take hairs behind tis sport to maul a runner i will reward thee once for thy sprightly comfort and tenfold for thy good valour come thee on i'll halt after exuant scene eight under the walls of alexandria alarum enter mark antony in a march scarus with others we have beat him to his camp run one before and let the queen know of our guests to-morrow before the sun shall see us we will spill the blood that has to-day escaped i thank you all for doughty handed are you and have fought not as you served the cause but as it had been each man's like mine you have shown all hectors enter the city clip your wives your friends tell them your feats whilst they with joyful tears wash the congealment from your wounds and kiss the honoured gashes whole tuscarus give me thy hand enter cleopatra attended to this great fairy i'll commend thy acts make her thanks bless thee to cleopatra o oh, thou dare the world chain mine armed neck leap thou a tyrant all through proof of harness to my heart and there ride on the pants triumphing lord of lords o infinite virtue comest thou smiling from the world's greatest snare uncaught my nightingale we have beat them to their beds what girl though grey do sometime mingle with our younger brown yet are we a brain that nourishes our nerves and can get goal for goal of youth behold this man commend unto his lips thy favouring hand kiss it my warrior he hath fought to-day as if a god in hate of mankind had destroyed in such a shape i'll give thee friend an armour all of gold it was a king's he has deserved it were it carbuncled like holy phoebus car 
Give me thy hand, though Alexandria make a jolly march. Bear thou hacked targets like the men that owe them. Had our great palace the capacity to camp this host, we all would sup together, and drink carouses to the next day's fate, which promises royal peril. Trumpeters with brazen din blast you the city's ear, make mingle with rattling tambourines, that heaven and earth may strike their sounds together, applauding our approach. Exeunt. Scene 9. Octavius Caesar's camp. Sentinels at their post. If we be not relieved within this hour, we must return to the court of guard. The night is shiny, and they say we shall embattle by the second hour of the morn. This last day was a shrewd one, too. Enter Demetius and Ababus. O oh, bear me witness, knight. What man is this? Stand close and list him. Be witness to me, O oh, thou blessed moon. When men revolted shall upon record bear hateful memory, poor Enobarbus did before thy face repent. Enobarbus! Peace! Hark further! O oh, sovereign mistress of true melancholy, the poisonous damp of night dispunge upon me. That life, a very rebel to my will, may hang no longer on me, throw my heart against the flint and hardness of my fault, which, being dried with grief, will break to powder and finish all foul thoughts. O oh, Antony, nobler than my revolt is infamous, forgive me in thine own particular, but let the world rank me in register, a master lever and a fugitive. O oh, Antony, O oh, Antony. Dies. Let's speak to him. Let's hear him for the things he speaks. May concern Caesar. Let's do so. But he sleeps. Swoons, rather. For so bad a prayer as his was never yet for sleep. Go we to him. Awake, sir, awake. Speak to us. Hear you, sir? The hand of death hath wrought him. Drums afar off. Hark, the drums. Demurely wake the sleepers. Let us bear him to the court of guard. He is of note. Our hour is fully out. Come on, then. He may recover yet. Exuant with the body. Scene ten. Between the two camps. Enter Mark Antony and Scarus with their army. Their preparation is to-day by sea. We please them not by land. For both, my lord. I would they'll fight i' the fire or i' the air. We'll fight them there too. But this it is. Our foot upon the hills adjoining to the city shall stay with us. Order for sea is given. We have put forth the haven. Where their appointment we may best discover and look on their endeavour. Excellent. Scene 11. Another part of the same. Enter Octavius Caesar and his army. But being charged, we will be still by land, which, as I take it, we shall, for his best force is forth to man his galleys. To the vales, and hold our best advantage. Exuant. Scene 12. Another part of the same. Enter Mark Antony and Scarus. Yet they are not joined. Where yon pine dost stand, I shall discover all. I'll bring thee word straight, how tis like to go. Exit. Swallows have built in Cleopatra's sails their nests. The augurers say they know not, they cannot tell, look grimly, and dare not speak their knowledge. Antony is valiant and dejected, and by starts his fretted fortunes give him hope and fear of what he has and has not. Alarum afar off, as at a sea fight. Re enter Mark Antony. All is lost. This foul Egyptian hath betrayed me. My fleet hath yielded to the foe, and yonder they cast their caps up and carouse together like friends long lost. Triple turned whore. Tis thou hast sold me to this novice, and my heart makes only wars on thee. Bid them all fly. For when I am revenged upon my charm, I have done all. Bid them all fly. Be gone. Exit Scarus. O son, thy uprise shall I see no more. Fortune and Antony part here. Even here do we shake hands. All come to this. The hearts that spanjled me at heels, to whom I gave their wishes, do to scandy, melt their sweets on blossoming Caesar. And his pine is bark that overtopped them all. Betrayed I am. Oh, this false soul of Egypt, 
this grave charm whose eye beckt forth my wars and called them home whose bosom was my crownet my chief end like a right gypsy hath at fast and loose beguiled me to the very heart of loss what eros eros enter cleopatra ah thou smell avaunt why is my lord enraged against his love oh. vanish or i shall give thee thy deserving and a blemish caesar's triumph let him take thee and hoist thee up to the shouting plebeians follow his chariot like the greatest spot of all thy sex most monster-like be shown for poorest diminutives for doits and let patient octavia plough thy visits up with her prepared nails exit cleopatra tis well thou art gone if it be well to live but better twere thou fellest into my fury for one death might have prevented many eros ho the shirt of nessus is upon me teach me alcides thou mine ancestor thy rage let me lodge Lycus on the horns of the moon, and with those hands that grasp the heaviest club subdue my worthiest self. The witch shall die. To this young Roman boy she hath sold me, and I fall under this plot. She dies for it. Eros, ho! Exit. Scene 13. Alexandria, Cleopatra's Palace. Enter Cleopatra, Carmian, Iris, and Mardian. Help me, my women. Oh, he is more mad than Telamon for his shield. The boar of Thessaly was never so embossed. To the monument. There lock yourself, and send him word you are dead. The soul and body rive not more in parting than greatness going off. To the monument. Mardian, go tell him I have slain myself. Say that the last word I spoke was Antony. I word it, prithee, piteously. Hence, Mardian. And bring me how he takes my death. <laughs> to the monument. Exuant. Scene 14. The same. Another room. Enter Mark Antony and Eros. Eros, thou yet beholdest me? Ay, noble lord. Sometimes we see a cloud that's dragonish, a vapour sometimes like a bear or lion, a towered citadel, a pendant rock, a forked mountain or blue promontory, with trees upon it that nod unto the world, and mock our eyes with air. Thou hast seen these signs, they are black vespers pageants. Ay, my lord. That which is now a horse, even with a thought the rack this limbs, and makes it indistinct as water is in water it does my lord my good knave eros now thy captain is even such a body here i am antony it cannot hold this visible shape my knave i made these wars for egypt and the queen whose heart i thought i had for she had mine which whilst it was mine had annexed unto it a million more now lost she eros has packed cards with Caesar, and false played my glory unto an enemy's triumph. Nay, weep not, gentle Eros, there is left us ourselves to end ourselves. Enter Martian. Oh, thy vile lady, she has robbed me of my sword. No, Antony, my mistress loved thee, and her fortunes mingled with thine entirely. Hence, saucy eunuch, peace. She hath betrayed me, and shall die the death. Death of one person can be paid but once, and that she has discharged. What thou wouldst do is done unto thy hand. The last she spake was Antony, most noble Antony. Then in the midst a tearing groan did break the name of Antony it was divided between her heart and lips she rendered life thy name so buried in her dead then dead unarm eros the long day's task is done and we must sleep to mardian that thou departest hence safe does pay thy labour richly go exit mardian off pluck off the sevenfold shield of Ajax cannot keep the battery from my heart. Oh, cleave my sides, 
Heart, once be stronger than thy continent, Crack thy frail case. A pace, Eros, a pace. No more a soldier, bruised pieces, go. You have been nobly born. From me a while. Exit Eros. I will o'er take thee, Cleopatra, and weep for my pardon. So it must be, for now all length is torture. Since the torch is out, lie down and stray no farther. Now all labour mars what it does. Yea, very force entangles itself with strength. Seal then, and all is done. Eros, I come, my queen. Eros, stay for me. Where souls do couch on flowers, will hand in hand, and with our sprightly port make the ghosts gaze. Dido and her Aeneas shall want troops, and all the haunt be ours. Come, Eros, Eros! Re-enter Eros. What would, my lord? Since Cleopatra died, I have lived in such dishonour that the gods detest my baseness. I that with my sword quartered the world, and all green Neptune's back with ships made cities, condemn myself to lack the courage of a woman, less noble mind than she which by her death our Caesar tells I am the conqueror of myself. Thou art sworn, Eros, that when the exigent should come, which now is come indeed, when I should see behind me the inevitable prosecution of disgrace and horror, that on my command thou then wouldst kill me. Do it. The time is come. Thou strikest not me. Tis Caesar thou defeatest. Put colour in thy cheek. The gods withhold me. Shall I do that which all the Parthian darts, though enemy, lost aim, and could not? Eros, wouldst thou be windowed in great Rome, and see thy master thus, with pleached arms, bending down his corrigible neck, his face subdued to penetrative shame, whilst the wheeled seat of fortunate Caesar, drawn before him, branded his baseness that ensued? I would not see it. Come, then, for with a wound I must be cured. Draw that thy honest sword which thou hast worn most useful for thy country. Oh, sir, pardon me. When I did make thee free, swarest thou not then to do this when I bade thee? Do it at once. All thy precedent services are all but accidents unpurposed. Draw and come. Turn from me, then, that noble countenance wherein the worship of the whole world lies. Lo thee. Turning from him. My sword is drawn. Then do it at once, the thing why thou hast drawn it. My dear master, my captain, and my emperor, let me say, before I strike this bloody stroke, farewell. Tis said, man, and farewell. Farewell, great chief. Shall I strike now? Now, Eros. Oh. Why, there, then. Thus I do escape the sorrow of Antony's death. Oh. Kills himself. Oh, thrice nobler than myself, thou teachest me, O valiant Eros, what I should, and thou couldst not. My queen and Eros have by their brave instruction got upon me a nobleness in record. But I will be a bridegroom in my death, and run into it as to a lover's bed. Come, then, and Eros, thy master dies, thy scholar. To do thus... Falling on his sword. Oh, oh, I learnt of thee. Ah, oh, not dead, not dead. The guard, ho, oh, oh, dispatch me. Enter Decetus and guard. What's the noise? I have done my work in, friends. Oh, make an end of what I have begun. The star is fallen. And time is at his period. Alas, Alas and, and woe. woe. Let him that loves me strike me dead. Not I. Nor I. Nor any one. Exuant God. Thy death and fortunes bid thy followers fly. This sword, but shown to Caesar with his tidings, shall enter me with him. Enter Diomedes. Where is Anthony? There, Diomed. There. Libsy, wilt thou not answer, man? Exit Dercetus. Art thou there, Diomed? Draw thy sword, and give me sufficing strokes for death. Most absolute lord, 
my mistress cleopatra sent me to thee when did she send thee now my lord where is she locked in her monument she had a prophesying fear of what hath come to pass for when she saw which never shall be found you did suspect she had disposed with caesar and that your rage would not be perjured she sent you word she was dead but fearing since how it might work hath sent me to proclaim the truth and i am come i dread too late too late good diomed call thy guard i prithee what ho the emperor's guard the guard what ho come your lord calls and to four or five of the guard of mark antony bear me good friends where cleopatra bides tis the last service that i shall command you woe woe are we sir you may not live to wear all your true followers out most, most heavy, heavy day. day nay my good fellows do not please sharp fate to grace it with your sorrows bid that welcome which comes to punish us and we punish it seeming to bear it lightly take me up i have led you oft carry me now good friends and have my thanks for all Exuant bearing mark antony scene fifteen the same a monument enter cleopatra and her maids aloft with carmion and iris o oh, carmion i will never go from hence be comforted dear madam no i will not all strange and terrible events are welcome but comforts we despise a size of sorrow proportioned to our cause must be as great as that which makes it oh enter below diomedes how now is he dead his death's upon him but not dead look out o oh, the other side your monument his guard have brought him thither enter below mark antony borne by the guard o oh, son burn the great sphere thou movest in darkling stand the varying shore of the world o oh, antony 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 help carmion help iris help help friends below let's draw him hither peace not caesar's valour hath overthrown antony but antony's hath triumphed on itself so it should be that none but antony should conquer antony but woe tis so i am dying egypt dying uh, only i hear importune death awhile until of many thousand kisses the poor last i lay up thy lips i dare not dear dear my lord pardon i dare not lest i be taken not the imperious show of the full fortune caesar ever shall be broached with me if knife drugs serpents have edge sting or operation i am safe your wife octavia with her modest eyes and still conclusion shall acquire no honour demurring upon me but come come antony help me my women we must draw thee up assist good friends oh quick oh i am gone here sport indeed how heavy weighs my lord our strength is all gone into heaviness that makes the weight had i great juno's power the strong-winged mercury should fetch thee up and set thee by jove's side yet come a little wishes were ever fools oh come 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 they heave mark antony aloft to cleopatra and welcome welcome die where thou hast lived quicken with kissing had my lips that power, thus would I wear them out. A oh, heavy sight! I am dying, Egypt, dying. Give me some wine, and let me speak a little. No, let me speak, and let me rail so high that the false housewife fortune break her wheel, provoked by my offence. One word, sweet queen, of Caesar, seek your honour with your safety. Oh, oh! They do not go together gentle hear me none about caesar trust but proculeus my resolution in my hands i'll trust none about caesar the miserable change now at my end lament nor sorrow at but please your thoughts in feeding them with those my former fortunes wherein i lived the greatest prince of the world 
the noblest oh. and do now not basely die not cowardly put my helmet off to my countrymen a roman by a roman valiantly vanquished now my spirit is going i can no more oh. Oh. noblest of men won't die hast thou no care of me shall i abide in this dull world which in thy absence is no better than a sty oh! see my women mark antony dies the crown of the earth doth melt my lord oh with it is the garland of the war the soldier's pole is fallen young boys and girls are level now with men the odds is gone and there is nothing left remarkable beneath the visiting moon <sighs> faints oh quietness lady she is dead too our sovereign lady madam oh madam 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 oh, royal egypt empress peace peace iris no more but in a woman and commanded by such poor passion as the maid that milks and does the meanest chairs. It were for me to throw my scepter at the injurious gods, to tell them that this world did equal theirs till they had stolen our jewel. All's but not. Patience is Scottish, and impatience does become a dog that's mad. Then is it sin to rush into the secret house of death? Ere death dare come to us? How do you, women? What, what, good cheer? Why, how now, Carmion? My noble girls? Ah, women, women, look, our lamp is spent, it's out. Good sirs, take heart. We'll bury him, and then what's brave, what's noble? Let's do it after the high Roman fashion, and make death proud to take us. Come away. This case of that huge spirit now is cold. Oh, women, women, come. We have no friend but resolution, and the briefest end. Exuant those above bearing off Mark Antony's body. End of Act Four.